makeup today. I'm on my way to work right now. I wanted to come on here because, y'all, we have to really talk. I think I owe it to my subscribers to explain why I have not been recording videos. First off, time management has really been off for me. Um, it's been a struggle really managing time. It truly has. I'm going to get very transparent. I'm going to be honest. Let's talk, y'all. So, I was not always the best student. When I went to Bennett, I was a great student. Like, right before I went to Bennett, I was a great student. I had been doing my work, really working hard so I could transfer. And then when I got to Bennett, my brother died. So, and that was very sudden and traumatic for me. So, it really, really, really knocked me off my game. And I'm not saying it's an excuse because things happen in life and that doesn't mean life stops just because something happens. But for me, it was very, very difficult to deal with. So it was very hard for me. So I ended up really, really struggling in school. I really, I, I it, it was, it was, it was difficult. And ugh, I'm going to be transparent because I feel like God is telling me to just be open and honest about it. I almost funked out of college. So... It really, really, really took a toll on me losing my brother. And I don't think I admitted how bad it affected me until after I got through it, if that makes sense. I went to therapy. That really helped a lot. But it was still so much. And it's always going to be that longing to want him in my life, you know. Because when you lose someone, it's just not easy. But I have really learned how to just live in my new normal and God has really helped me but at the beginning of this year I was super depressed and I was really really struggling y'all to the point where my mom had to take like a flight like she said God told her to take a flight out to come see me because that's how low I was and it's actually funny because no one really I, I'm, I'm the type of person that doesn't really say how I feel I don't really say my emotions like that I'll say it to, to my close to the people close in my family but like my friends they had no idea what I was going through and because sometimes I feel like I have to be strong like I'm the strong friend so I think some people assume that I'm just always okay but I'm not in all honesty and life was really hard for me at that time God had really been breaking some things in my life and in March he just completely delivered me from like myself and even things oh come on light even things that I had deep down inside from like a child like how I felt as a child because I had and the thing about it is I had great a great family great parents but I was feeling ways that I didn't even know that I felt I had like just you know everything in life things that you go through in life affect you and it was I was um, being bullied and a lot of things. So there was a lot of things that were still deep down inside. And God completely checked me and delivered me from that. And when the pandemic started, it was still kind of different because I had to pack up my stuff so suddenly and leave and come home. And that was very hard for me because I started a whole life in North Carolina, but I did not have an apartment. So I was not established yet. So that was very hard for me. That was very difficult having to come home at 22. It was it was very difficult because I wanted to, I had planned to get an apartment and a lot of things. So that happened and then God just kept breaking stuff. And the thing about it is he really, really delivered me from, from some stuff and I'm thankful for that because it really helped me staying home because I was able to just, even though life's hard, it's different when you living on your own and you come home and you gotta abide by your parents' rules. Even though, you know, you respect your parents and it's like, okay, like I can't just get up and go when I want. And this Corona, so that made it even worse. But y'all, things were looking down. I thought I was gonna have to quit school. 
I thought I was going, oh, I'm getting so honest. Whew. I really pray that this helps somebody because I literally feel led to just not tell all my business, but God has really been getting on me about just being straight up and transparent. So I'm just about to do this right now. So I pray that this helps somebody. Um, but I almost dropped out of college because I had struggled that bad. It got that bad. And so I was planning before because because I thought the corona was going to be over. You know, a lot of people thought by August it's going to be over. So it's March. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go back to a JC, do what I need to do there. And then I'll transfer back to Bennett and finish, right? That was going to be a whole extra year. So I was going to be graduating maybe December 2022. And so, and I was even questioning my major because I was struggling so hard. And I was not really doing everything I needed to do either. So I was not really doing everything I needed to do. I was depressed and I was just, I did not see graduation in my future. Just being, just being straight up honest with y'all. Did not see graduation in my future. And so the pandemic gets worse, y'all. And we find out that Bennett is online. And I had planned to not go to Bennett in the fall. I had planned to go to a JC. So I was signed up for a JC. And I actually text my, I just something told me, text your tutor advisor. So I just texted her and I was like, I told my mom, I said, if, I, if it's possible, I want to go back to Bennett in the fall. Um, I had not been made to feel that by, by certain people, I had been made to feel that I couldn't go back in the fall. Like, oh, no, you need to wait. And so I was a little discouraged because I was like, yes, I was really struggling. But I pray they will let me back in. When I say testimony time, y'all, this is a straight testimony because... So I go and text the advisor. And she literally told me. That. And it's crazy because I filled out all the papers to withdraw, to leave, all of that. I go to text the advisor, right? So I'm told that the withdrawal papers are there. I mean, are in. I'm no longer a student at Bennett until I want to apply back, stuff like that, right? So I'm. that was the hardest thing for me to do, but I felt like it was just the best thing for me to start over, right? So I, I go to the advisor. Y'all, she says to me, thinking about it makes me tear up. She says to me, you do not have to do anything. All you need to do is renew your loans or uh, speak to financial aid. And and this was, what's crazy is this was actually the day before class started. Because I did not think I was going to get back. And then something just, I, God just told me to text her and my, and my mom. So I was like, okay. So I text her. She literally says to me, you don't have to do anything. All you have to do is renew your stuff. I'm signing you up for classes tonight, y'all. The next day I was signed up, that Monday I was in class, I'm back at Bennett. They didn't put the withdrawal papers through because I don't, I don't, I actually don't know. That was just straight up God, but they, they understood my situation. And because I was such a good student for the most part and in such good standing, good behavior, they knew that I was really going through it. So that really, really, really stood out to me. I was like, thank you, Jesus. And now I'm actually graduating earlier than I thought I was. Instead of um, spring 22, I'm graduating December 21 next year. And that literally threw me because when I go, so, and then they split our semesters into mini semesters. So for my first classes, I had two classes. They were only two weeks because they were one semester. I mean, they were one unit classes. So I find out that they split it into mini messages, which is seven weeks long, y'all. When I say that, it's literally God because I literally was struggling with having classes for a long time. I know it sounds crazy, but I was struggling. Ooh, look at my nails. I was struggling with having classes for a long time, honestly. 16 weeks was killing me. I'm not even going to lie. And I find out we split into mini semester, And then on top of that, I got a three, and and then I found out that every mini semester your grade it it goes your GPA uh, updates. So for the first mini semester I got a three which was like the biggest step, y'all. I was literally shouting, even though it was one unit classes. It was just, it was just a lot for me. And now, y'all, 
this is so crazy still thinking about it. Ooh, sir, move out my way, buddy. Move out my way. Y'all, now I received a scholar. Okay, so listen. So I passed the first mini semester with flying colors. This second mini semester that I'm in right now, I currently have an A in my psychology. Think about this about to make me cry y'all i have an a in my psychology class i aced my midterm somebody needs to hear this it's about to make me cry because just because you are struggling just because you may be feeling like you're feeling right now does not mean you are going to stay there it does not mean that i aced my midterm y'all turned it on my assignments and i have a uh, project due at the end of the semester which i know i'm gonna ace because i'm preparing for it but y'all, when I say God is so good, at the beginning of the year, New Year's, I went to a service at my church, Glad Tidings in Hayward, and me and my sister went to the altar. God told us to go to the altar, so we went to the altar, and the preacher prayed for us, and he told us that school was fine. He spoke to me, my sister, he told my sister that school was going to be fine for her. And he told me that I was going to be fine, school was going to be fine, I was going to be financially fine, all of that. And at that time, I had really been not doing well in school. I was not doing well, and then March came and I, I would draw. So I was really distraught because I'm like, I thought school was going to be fine, you know, I was really struggling. And now looking at where I am right now at this very moment, when God speaks to you, Listen, it don't, I don't care where you are in your life when he speaks. If God tells you that something is going to be okay, that something is going to be fine, listen to him. Because looking now at my life, I'm like, everything he spoke, everything that was spoken to me by God has come. And everything else that he's spoken is, is as if he's preparing me for it. So don't feel discouraged. This, I don't know who this is for. But this got to be for, for somebody because I just told all my business and I'm posting this. It does not matter if you make mistakes. Do, you are not a failure. You are amazing. Do not allow the situation that you're in to dictate how you continue. You will be fine. Do not allow the situation you're in right now to dictate how you feel your future is going to go, if that makes sense. Like, right now is not, what you may be going through right now is not your future. God has his hand on your future. So just trust him with everything that is going on in your life. And trust him with your life, really. Trust him with your life and trust him. Ooh, did I um, just honk? I think I just honked. That was an accident. 